Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Good grief, my postie has just delivered issue 471 of White Dwarf magazine. We haven't even had Christmas yet. But as always, when I received this magazine, I wanted to put together a very quick video to talk about anything in the magazine that interests me. For people who are new to my channel, I don't go through White Dwarf magazine in depth. I really just look through it to find anything relating to boxed games. There are many other videos on YouTube that will go through all of the other articles in depth. However, as always, if you do have specific questions about what is in this issue of the magazine, do feel free to ask them in the comments section below. I will do my best to answer everybody if I can. With that out of the way, I will start by saying this issue really isn't a strong issue for anybody who is interested in boxed games. There are no new rules for Kill Team. There are no new rules for Necromunda. There are no new rules for Blood Bowl. And of course, as you would expect, there is nothing in here about Warhammer Quest. There is a small article on the new Underworld box set Harrowdeep, but nothing with new rules. Furthermore, unlike last month, there are no free gifts with this issue either. This is an issue focusing on three things. It focuses very much on new rules for Warhammer 40,000, new rules for Age of Sigmar, and also some pretty interesting coverage on Middle Earth, the strategy battle game. And there's quite a lot of content for that game because it is the 20th anniversary. Yes, it has been 20 years since The Fellowship of the Ring came out in cinemas. It has been 20 years since the strategy battle game began. So my Christmas present this year is apparently the crippling and sudden realization that I'm starting to get a bit old. Never mind, I'm not gonna let it stop me playing with little plastic toys, so let's have a look inside this magazine. First of all, I will mention very briefly the card insert. This is something they've been doing for a little while in the magazine now, and also for a little while, I feel like they've been wasting it. They've been squandering the opportunity to put interesting content in the magazine. A couple of months ago, they put in a piece of artwork that you could put behind your miniatures when you were photographing them, and I thought at that time, they probably couldn't do anything worse with it. And then the next month they put in some little gift tags and things you could cut out and put on your Christmas presents. And I thought that was worse. And now this month to kick off the new year, they have done something which I think is the worst yet. They have included a hobby bingo card. This is one of those things where as you achieve things throughout the year, you're supposed to cross it off on your hobby bingo card. And for me, this is just a complete waste. Yeah, it's a cute idea, and I'm sure there will be lots of people who will think it's actually a fun little idea, and they will think I'm being far too negative about it, but I just think this card insert could be put to much better use. This card insert should be used for new cards for different games. It should be used for polite rules references. This is supposed to be the magazine celebrating the 20th anniversary of the strategy battle game. Why not have a cool rule summary in here for that or a special character card or why not a little extra supplement for the battle in Balin's tomb game which they recently released as a celebration of the 20th anniversary of the game so much that could have been done so much that hasn't been done in fairness i will point out that on the back of the bingo card they have included a campaign map for the invidian war campaign which is a special campaign that they detail in this issue that is of course far more useful but even so i just feel like they could be doing more with this in terms of new rules for different game systems we have a flashpoint clash article for age of sigma which is a battle tome update for soul blight grave lords and that has a whole bunch of stuff in there like Allegiance abilities, the core battalions, open play rules, matched play rules, rules for using your Grave Lords in Path to Glory. There's all your veteran abilities there, territories, heroic upgrades. And then we have the Invidian War campaign, which I mentioned just a moment ago, which is a campaign for two to four players who each have to have a Soul Blight Grave Lords army. There is also an extensive Flashpoint Octarius section, which has some narrative fiction, and then it has rules for the Butcher Town Wars, which includes a new theater of war, some new Crusade relics, 
A special mission, the Butcher Town Thunder Brawl, which is a mission designed for Strike Force teams, but can be scaled up accordingly. So you have your mission briefing and mission rules, your stratagems, more stratagems over the page, and then your mission objectives and your map. Rounding out the article is something I think Tyranid players will get a kick out of, and that is an army of renown. We have the Crusher Stampede. So we have the introduction there, and then we have all of your army of renown special rules. The Warlord traits. Crusher Stampede stratagems. And then the Mass Convergence Discipline. There is also a small section with new rules for Battle Sisters, with some new squad profiles. They also have rules for the Master of the Revolution himself, the Red Gobbo. Here is his Warhammer Legends profile, as he bounces around on Bouncer the Squig. That's it for new rules in this issue but I do want to briefly mention the Middle Earth section at the back of the magazine, which is actually really interesting. There's a very nice timeline of the game dating all the way back to 2001. They talk about each of the box sets, each of the major releases, and there are some little facts dotted around which are really interesting. For example, did you know that during the year of release, the Fighting Urluk High box set outsold the Space Marines Tactical Squad box set? And it's the only kit they've ever made that has achieved that. Also, did you know that when they were making the dwarves, they were so intricate and detailed that they pushed their mold making tolerances to 0.3 millimeters for the first time in Games Workshop's history? There's some fascinating nerdy facts for you. The magazine also has a really nice section on the scenes of Middle Earth with some really cool dioramas. I particularly like this one, Boromir's Redemption, as he fights the Urluk High while blowing the Horn of Gondor. But then I would like that one, wouldn't I? Boromir's the Lad. There's a really nice Gates of Moria setup. And I do just want to show you this Balin's Tomb setup here, which is fantastic. And also highlights a big issue I have with the Battle in Balin's Tomb board game, which they recently released. If you've played the board game, you will know that this setup here is very similar. You can see the trapdoors up on the walkway, but look at the placement of the pillars in this set here. The pillars are down on the ground, providing something for the combatants to scurry around and fight between. In the board game, all of those blocking pillars are up on the walkways as well, where they hardly ever come into play. They have very little impact on the game at all. They really feel like they've been put in the wrong place in the board game. But after showing off all those cool scenes, there's a little section here on building those scenes, which is interesting stuff. And then a section on the legions of Middle Earth, which just shows some painted miniatures, which is always nice to see. I think for fans of the Middle Earth strategy battle game, there's some really good stuff in here. Although no mention at all of that board game. You thought it might have at least got a shout out somewhere. And really that's it. Other than to say, look at this in the next issue, we are getting gene stealer cults for kill teams. So that is something for kill team players to look out for, something they should be interested to see. And there we go, a very, very quick flick through issue 471 to look at some of the new rules that have been introduced in this issue to help you decide whether you might want to pick this magazine up for yourself. For me personally, really only the strategy battle game stuff is of interest, even though I don't really play that game at the moment. I do love the theme, I do love the miniatures, I do love seeing nicely painted miniatures and cool dioramas. But other than that, there's not a lot here for me. Maybe there will be something here for you, but that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.